about the conception of this idea? How and where did it all began? You know, for some time, we in the National Council of Science Museums in India have been working for what is called today hands-on science. That means developing exhibits in a manner that the visitors themselves can enjoy through their operations and they themselves can operate these exhibits. When we develop these exhibits, working exhibits, we also take care of what is called the state-of-the-art technology. Now, in certain areas today, this technology is proliferating quite a lot in different manner. And one of them is the animated dinosaurs. The people are using a pneumatic operation controlled by computers. Computer controlled pneumatic robots, you can say like that. And these things compared to the traditional motor control mechanism are much more rugged, durable and last long. So we thought that probably we could now concentrate in this particular area and develop something which would last long and which would be interesting and which would carry an otherwise boring message. And what is that otherwise boring message is the message connected to environment and ecology, you know, in which the people are concerned. But when I say people are concerned, probably some people are concerned, but not the general people. So we want to make the general people aware of that topic. If we simply address them that you have to do this and you don't do this, they would not listen. So we decided to embark on this animated dinosaur project so that through this excitement, we can carry our message to the visitors. So that's the idea with which we started working. And now the result is this group of 15 dinosaurs. In fact, 14 plus one. Tell us briefly about what the dinosaurs are made of. Uh, you know, the dinosaurs are made of different kinds of materials. I would say the structure, the skeleton, is made of steel and in some places aluminum. In certain areas where we have sensitive bearings, we use uh, bronze metal. But the outer skin is made of fiberglass reinforced plastic and on top of that one foam padded special kind of latex rubber. They are specially treated. Now here something is very important for us to consider. Uh, before us there are two more animated dinosaur manufacturers in the world. One in Japan, one in the United States. We are the third manufacturer in the world for animated dinosaurs. In two other cases the skin is very, very sensitive and such dinosaurs are to be exhibited only in air-conditioned controlled atmosphere. We thought that we have to develop something which can stand the rugged atmosphere and climate of this country. After all, dinosaurs did not live in air-conditioned place. So we wanted our dinosaurs to stand the humidity and the heat of the country. So this really made our job much more difficult. but. We think that we have succeeded in developing that kind of skin, which looks like very normal, but it is very much durable. Uh, I would mention one point in this connection, that we are expecting the life of these dinosaurs to be at least 10 years, and that's a very good life estimate. Dr. Bush, please tell us about the mechanism behind the movements, the operational part. Yes, the dinosaurs, as I told you earlier, they are moved by pneumatic operations, means compressed air. Compressed air from big compressors are allowed to enter into cylinders which drive the piston. And the movement of the piston is suitably uh, channelized to the different limbs of the dinosaurs. 
and you must have noticed over there that they have different movements. They wag the tail, they move the neck in horizontal as well as vertical direction and in both directions simultaneously they open up the jaws, the eyeballs move, then some of them have movements on the knees and the torso, various kinds. So all these movements, a fairly complex pattern, these movements are programmed in a computer. And this is very important. For example, if we have six major movements, then by permutation and combination, we can have probably 100 different configurations of movements. And that is done by computer programming. So this is the way they work. And one more important thing, their voice, the roaring. And they are created by sound synthesizers. And we checked over there from the fossil remains, the dinosaurs whose voice organs uh, or voice lines, pipelines, uh, have been very small and narrow. Obviously, it is expected, natural, that they would give shrill sound, high frequency, high pitched sound, whereas the dinosaurs which have got a large diameter voice pipe, so they would give hoarse sound. These are some uh, basic things. This is, you know, one of the two things in which we have to take help of imagination. Otherwise, our dinosaurs are very, very authentic based on scientific research. Two things which had to be imagined. One, what sort of voice they could have and the second one, the color of the skin because the fossil remains do not give any evidence on the skin color, although the texture of the skin is very well represented from the fossils. You know, for all our activities, what we project is education through fun. And dinosaur exhibition is no exception. There's a lot of fun here through the movements of the dinosaurs, no doubt, and a lot of excitement. But behind this fun and excitement, there's a strong note of education. And what is that? What we want to project here through this exhibition is that we have a very important lesson to derive from dinosaurs. Dinosaurs themselves were very large and mighty creatures who dominated this planet for over or almost 200 million years. In spite of their strength, suddenly they became extinct and they could not defend themselves. So the scientists want to know the reasons for which this sudden extinction came up, leaving absolutely no trace or nothing in the evolutionary process. Now, if we know the reasons for which dinosaurs became extinct, probably we could take enough safeguard so that man does not face the future, the same future as the dinosaurs. Man could take enough precaution to avoid such reasons for which dinosaurs became extinct. And so the whole question is really the question of human survival. It's an ecological exhibition. And that's the most important part that we want to emphasize, not only through the dinosaurs themselves, but through a lot of supporting exhibits all around the dinosaurs.